December 19th, 2019. Joe here at Simple Life Show. Where the simplest answers are usually the best. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, do all that good social media stuff to keep the rational voices in the forefront where they belong. So I have been thinking a lot about the uh, the Second Amendment crisis that really is going on in this country right now. And I think it's going on under you know behind the scenes. And we're not really hearing a lot about it in the mainstream media because they don't want to talk about it. We, they want to talk about the impeachment. They want to keep that in the forefront. And I believe that's you know the only thing they really accomplished with the whole impeachment thing is to put an asterisk next to Trump's name and to be able to refer to him as the impeached president. And he's going to be reelected again so they can continue doing that. Of course, Al Green and others like Maxine Waters and all of the lunatics on the left. And I'm not saying they're all lunatics. I'm just saying that a handful of them are lunatics because they have been crying for impeachment for the last three years. And it's like just a baby that won't shut up. You just want to just do something. Give it a bottle. Give it something to pacify it. Can we I mean, can we just move forward as a country? You know, this is just kind of ridiculous. I had a chance to watch a few of the snippets from the impeachment, um, I guess, debate that they had. It, it went on forever. I think it concluded around 8, 830 uh, Eastern Standard Time. And I, w- I didn't watch really hardly any of it. I turned the TV off because I just really didn't want to look at it. I saw some of the snippets from Pelosi, some of the uh, the, the minority and majority leaders, and uh, some of the more rambunctious speeches that came from the right, I really didn't hear too much of the left. Uh, all they really would, all they really talked about was one thing: that no man is above the law. Well, thank you for pointing that out, Democrats. Uh, every man is not below the law either. And where's the crime? It's okay to be not above the law, but if you want to impeach someone. At least as it's been a tradition in this country, that there must be some sort of breaking of law. Now, this isn't something that's a hard and fast rule that's in the Constitution. It is kind of vague, and it gives the power to the House. The House, however, broke their own rules. And if you don't know anything about that, then maybe do a little research. I, I really don't want to really talk about everything uh, that's impeachment related because it's just, you know, it's inundated. You know, it's just really just getting. We really need to move forward uh, as a nation, and we just really need to stop crying and pretending we're victims all the time. I mean, that's that's really what it is in a nutshell. So we know that there is an issue in Virginia. Obviously, I consider this ground zero because the laws that they have proposed in Virginia are wide, uh, widespread gun control laws that would take away a lot of people's guns, and it would require that not only the police force, but more than likely the National Guard would have to get involved. We know that's going to happen. We know we're we're watching that. Excuse me, I'm having some pop-ups come up. It's kind of frustrating. But we know this is going to happen, and we know that it isn't going to be a walk in the park for Virginia. There's going to be a lot of people that are upset, and they're probably going to end up fighting back in some way or another. But uh, Virginia is not the only place where all of these gun laws are really coming to play. So this has been happening over the last year or so. Uh, it's, it's been accelerating over the past few months. I tried to look into this at least once a day and see what the, you know, see what the news is, what's going on. Try to disseminate by looking at every source, looking at, uh, looking at past gun legislation, trying to get a better idea of where this is all heading. And as I have said in a lot of my videos, I believe this is all heading towards one thing. And the reason why, uh, the, and, the, and the one thing obviously is mass gun confiscation and, and, and very restrictive laws. It, there's even some proposals right now that want to imprint bullets with certain serial codes or something, something that's called microprinting for bullets and i don't think this is going to pass but who knows in this crazy world that we live in that uh, your gun would now be obsolete check this truly try to understand if they make this a law that all of your all of your guns must be have you must have the ability to microprint certain things on every bullet that is fired out of the gun now 
this obviously would make guns very expensive expensive if you had to have some sort of micro printing device inside the gun that would print every single bullet that came out i'm not exactly sure how that would work i would imagine that semi-automatic weapons might go away um i mean it's just I mean, if you're firing in rapid succession, because uh, I know I can go through a clip in a matter of seconds, um, you know, how fast is this going to be able to print on your typical bullet? I really don't know. Um, it will also, as a result, it will make all your guns obsolete and therefore illegal. Think about it. They are trying to put a lot of different laws as a back as, as a back door into gun confiscation they can confiscate your gun without them confiscating it they can just make every single gun that you have illegal they don't have to come and get it they just have to require that uh, you using that gun is now illegal so they are looking for all different types of back doors into this maryland has a gun law that they are i believe they've already got passed but there's 21 state attorneys uh, that's uh, attorney generals, 21 of them, 21 from different different states, urge Supreme Court to block Maryland gun law. So what is this Maryland gun law? This Maryland gun law conceals, uh, I'm sorry, is, is concerned with concealed and carry permits. And what is very interesting here is that, uh, you know what, I'm just going to go to the Maryland gun law. Here, this was uh, usconcealedcarry.com, and this is for Maryland. Summary: Maryland gun laws. Uh, the the first is the the first paragraph of this Maryland gun law is pretty uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, it's nothing that is nefarious. Uh, the second one is a little bit worse. Here, open and concealed carry are legal in Maryland only for Maryland wear slash care handgun permit holders in order to attain a wchp applicants must be at least 21 years old typical and must show this is very important must show a good and substantial reason to carry a handgun you see what they're doing here they are making things so vague at least that's what they're trying to do they're making they're trying to make everything very vague or they're trying to look for back doors into gun restriction Mark my words, the Democrats, this is what this is one of the big things that they have always been after. It is their golden chalice. It's their 12 commandments. It's whatever you want to call it. It's their prize that they're always after. And they know they can't go about it usually in a more front facing way or uh, the bluntest way possible saying that we're going to come get your guns. Now I'm not saying that that's without outside the realm of possibility because we're seeing that in as a real possibility in Virginia and we're seeing surrounding States just like Maryland here who are trying to make sure that no one has a gun on them in public. Okay. And it's just simply by that, uh, that, that phrase there where you have to show that you have a good and substantial reason to carry a handgun. I'll tell you what, my good and substantial reason is for self-defense. I, I believe that everyone deserves and should have the right, per the Constitution, we'll get to that in a few minutes, to protect themselves from harm. That is a good and substantial reason. Why else would you be trying to carry a gun on you? I mean, really think about it. This isn't this isn't, you know, rocket science. This is first grade stuff here. This is just one plus one equals two. If there's if, if there's an, if there's evil in the world and there's people that are violent and that would cause you harm for no reason at all. And we've seen that it's 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 getting kind of bad out there, even though overall violence is down. We see a lot more open acts of just gratuitous violence. And when those things happen, yeah, people get scared. They want to they want to get a gun. They want to be able to feel secure. And they want to feel like they have a backup plan if something goes south. People don't put a gun on, at least I don't put a gun on, with the intent of ever drawing that gun. That's a worst nightmare scenario. But I would rather have it there than not have it and need it. I mean, this is I mean, these are these are these are not just talking points. This is just pure logic. So everyone knows that uh, 
Supreme Court Scalise died a while back. And I, you know, I could go on and on about how that happened under possible nefarious types of uh, situation. Uh, and none of his death just doesn't make sense to me and never has. But we don't talk about that anymore because it's not new. We just we simply forgot about it. Just like we're going to forget about the impeachment, which we should. I, I, I personally don't think it's even going to go to trial. I think they're going to just get a simple ma- uh, majority vote and that will be it. So I wanted to go back to Scalise. Now, when a back to this, actually, let me go back to the 21 state attorneys. Uh, they are actually trying to uh, get the Supreme Court to strike down a lot of these these laws. And I think that it's going to end up working. <coughs> Excuse me. But I think it's going to end up working because there's a lot of rumors about the Supreme Court that's actually going to be broadening the Second Amendment and kind of going back and looking at the Second Amendment with fresh eyes, I guess, and, and trying to because it seems like the problem really is the Supreme Court hasn't been talking about the uh, about about uh, about laws, about uh, gun laws or the Second Amendment. It's been around a decade. It's been over a decade. The last one was in 2008 with uh, the Heller case, uh, D.C. versus Heller. And that's a and that's a land that's a that's a that's a that's a landmark case that if you do not know anything about D.C. versus Heller. And you really need to look it up because if you're a gun control, if you're not a gun control advocate, but if you're a Second Amendment advocate, which you everyone should be, this is one case that you really need to look at. And the Supreme Court has had a problem for a long time just simply when it comes to Second Amendment, because most of the time they're referring back to Heller, which is a good thing. But they've also had to look back in, you know, the history and traditions and so forth to get a better idea of how to interpret any kind of gun regulation that might come across their desk. So we have to go back to 2008. And we're going to be looking at, um, this is really important, we're we're looking at Columbia versus Heller, D.C. versus Heller. And we're looking at the opinion or the summary from Scalise, uh, uh, Scalia, excuse me. Scalia and what he says about the second amendment. Okay. So we're going to skip down to where it actually starts talking about second. First, we need to turn to the meaning of the second amendment. Now the meaning of the second amendment is something that's been highly, it's been highly debated for, for decades and decades. And I believe that Scalia is probably the one that gets it right because we have been debating it. And that's the problem. It's pretty straightforward. He says the Second Amendment provides a well-regular militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. In interpreting this text, we are guided by the principle of the Constitution was written to be understood by the voters. Please understand that this is a this is a big thing that he said when the when the Constitution was written, it wasn't written for legal scholars. It was it was written so the normal people of that time could understand it. And this is huge. This is something that no one really talks about when they're talking about interpreting the Constitution. The Constitution was not meant to be interpreted. It was meant to be taken exactly, literally by what it says. And Scalia just really hits it home right there by saying that. So all this debate about the Second Amendment is, is, is contrary to what the founders intended for that document, to be understood by the layperson, the people of the time. And, and trust me, people back then, you know, I'm not saying that were, they were dumb. I, I would probably consider people now, on average, probably less smart. We know more, but that's beside the point. It was written for the layperson to understand. Its words and phrases were used in their normal and ordinary as distinguished from technical meaning. And this is reaffirmed through uh, United States versus Sprague and also Gibbons versus Ogden. Um, normal meaning may, of course, include an idiomatic meaning, but it excludes secret or technical meetings that would not have been known to ordinary citizens in the founding generation. So while legal scholars today are trying to reinterpret and reimagine the Second Amendment, they, they, what, what they are in fact doing is unconstitutional on a foundational basis because that, because that is not what the founders intended by that document itself. They intended this document to be understood by simple people. Secondly, we go forward, and it gets even worse here, or better, however you want to look at it. The two sides in this case, which he's referring to Heller, 
has set out very dis- different interpretations of the amendment. Petitioners and today's dissenting judges believe, and I think that we're getting back to that, and uh, that it protects only the right to possess and carry a firearm in connection with malicious service. We're going to see why that doesn't make any sense. See brief for petitioners 11 through 12. Okay. Respondent argues that it provides an individual right to possess a firearm unconnected with the service in the militia and to use that arm for traditionally lawful purposes, such as self-defense within your home. I think it also goes along the scope of concealed carry as well, because you are, you, your, your right for self-defense does not end when you walk out that door. I mean, really think about it. Are, are you, is your right to self-defense only within your home and that's it? So when you walk outside, it's just, it, 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 it can just be a heyday. Like, you know, you didn't have a right to self-defense, so I'm going to hit you in the face, right? Wrong. No, you have a right to self-defense and it goes, be, it goes well beyond your front door. It goes to wherever you want to go besides, I guess, federal buildings and stuff like that. I would I would concede that I, I I would not I would say that you shouldn't be taking your firearm onto you know school property unless you're a resource officer I think all resource officers should be highly trained and armed highly trained not just armed they need to be trained to deal with these types of situations that happen when you have active shooters and I think that the the, the typical resource officer on a school grounds is sorely untrained when it comes to this. Even some of the police are untrained. They should be trained by this by now. We saw that with, um, you know, the the recent school shooting. There's been a lot of them, but you know which one I'm talking about. You know, all of the cops that were cowards. Yeah, we're not going to get into that because that just that really gets that really gets to me, you know. But he goes further by saying the Second Amendment is naturally divided into two parts. It has a prefatory clause, and it's an operative clause. Okay, I'm sure you've heard of these before. The former does not limit the latter grammatically, but rather announces a purpose that is key. The amendment could be rephrased because a well-regulated militia is necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. They're talking about the people and also a militia. But think about it. They are defining what a militia is. It is not a separate, it's not a separate noun or a subject. They are defining what the militia needs. A well-regulated regu- militia needs people in it. It needs, it, 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 it's not a separate thing. The, the, the actual militia is the entire group of people that are in the United States that own that own firearms, that is the militia. That is the last line of self-defense in this country. Because if everything else goes, if the government collapses and a country wants to take over, guess who is going to step up? It's not going to just be the military. It's going to be all of the people that have guns out there that, that will be protecting themselves. And guess what? If that, if that happened, it wouldn't be just inside your home. It, the, the founders knew exactly what they were doing when they made this document. They worded it in a way that could not be misunderstood. But guess what? There's a lot of people on here in this country, particularly from the left, that want to twist this document into something that it's not. So he says uh, further here, a treatise on government. And okay, so although the structure of the Second Amendment is unique in our Constitution. Other legal documents of the founding era, particularly individual rights provi- uh, provisions of state constitutions, commonly includes a prefatory statement of purpose. This is where the conversation ends on the Second Amendment. And if you're ever in a if you're ever in a debate with someone on the Second Amendment, this is what you need to bring up. You need to bring up Columbia versus Heller and uh, Scalia's comments on the Second Amendment and what the Second Amendment actually means. We see a lot of different cases, and the cases for the gun control are flooding in to the Supreme Court. And you wonder why? It's because of all of these governors and all these state governments, are that they, they are, through their own legislature, whether they're 
you know, la- you know, Democrat controlled or not, usually if they're Democrat controlled, one of the first orders are, are going to be gun control. Please understand this is one of the biggest goals of the communist ideology and the infiltration of the communist state into any kind of country. You have to disarm the citizens one way or the other because you, if, you have a, if you have a well-regulated militia and an armed populace, which I consider they're, they're, there's no difference between the two, they're the same thing, then you, you will never be able to take over that state. The founders knew exactly what they were doing. That's why, that's why it's the Second Amendment. It, it's, it, it's only preceded by the most important amendment of all, which is the First Amendment. It, it, is, it is, you know, it, I, I really don't even, I, I would consider them the same, honestly, because the First and Second Amendment, they, they, they're very, very important to upholding the rest of the amendments. And since we do live in a republic, and we do not live in a democracy, that means that the majority cannot take the inalienable rights away from the minority, no matter what, because we have a constitution, because we live under a republic, because that protects the God-given rights that we have when we are born in this country, and that is one of the rights that we have is to self-defense. So I'm going to keep an eye, and I think that uh, everyone really should on this because it is accelerating. It's getting more scary every, every day because it's not just about guns. It's not just about protecting the children, which everybody wants to do. But we need to stop using these things as a type of shroud of ignorance or some sort of backdoor into something that would violate the Constitution. We need to stop using these things as pawns. And we need to stop thinking with our emotions all the time either. We need to stop doing that. We need to be using our rational brains when it comes to this. And if you sit back and if you don't speak up and if you don't do anything, guess what? You can't always rely on the Supreme Court to save us. I think that the Supreme Court will do the right thing. It is stacked in our favor. That is one of the best things that, that, that Trump has done for the Republican Party is actually stack the Supreme Court because the, the Supreme Court is one of the last lines of defense. It is not the last one, but it is one of the, the last lines. They are there to protect the, the Constitution of the United States and to Repub- protect the Republic as well. And our own personal freedoms. I wasn't even going to do a video today, just to be honest. I just don't feel good. And that's just being real. But, um, you know, when I saw this story about the 21 state attorneys that, uh, that were petitioning the, uh, the Supreme Court, um, I just, you know, I had, to, I had to say some more about it. More will be coming. I will keep on top of this like I do with everything else. I can't report on everything. But I try to look at the things that, that, are, that affect the Constitution the most, the things that will affect your life the most. I'm not going to ever be doing videos usually on conspiracy theories or entertainment or the Illuminati and stuff like that. I think that it's important, but right now we really need to focus on what's going down as far as the Constitution is concerned. Until next time, this is Joe with Simple Life Show, and you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.